So, welcome to the Dabbling in Discomfort podcast. I am Arlo Gagestein, and this podcast is where we strive to help you live a life outside of your comfort zone. And I am super excited today to have a great friend, Soraya Long, as my guest. Soraya and I go way back. We went to massage school together like 12 years ago or something like that. Yep. It's been a long time. Yeah, 12 years. Um, I'm, I'm getting sidetracked already, but it blows my mind how when I met Nate Graven, so Nate Graven is a mutual acquaintance and mentor for, for Soraya and I both, and he's the one that, that convinced me to go to massage school, and I believe you as well. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, but when I met Nate Graven, he had been doing massage for 12 years. And now I've been doing massage for 12 years and I'm like, We're the experience, oh my really. goodness. Right. <laughs> Except now he's been doing it for 24 yeah, years yeah, or whatever. And, <laughs> yeah, but, but that just, man, that blows my mind. Hey, I never thought about that. Yeah. Anyway, I think about it a lot because I realize how old I'm getting. <laughs> anyway, um, I am so excited to have Soraya on. She is probably the toughest person that I know. Like, and she's shaking her head no, which I knew she would. But but really, anybody at any time could ask me, who's the toughest person you know? And it would be Soraya. <laughs> so she's a fierce competitor, a fantastic runner. Um, I don't know what you would say, but I, I always consider you a world-class runner. Oh. So <laughs> I'm elite for my area. Elite for your area. Okay, she's world-class. <laughs> she, she has a big area. No. <laughs> anyway... Um, I am super excited to have her here. We've been friends for a long time. She's my go-to massage therapist. She's a fierce competitor. And we just like to get to know Soraya a little bit. So we're going to start out at the beginning when you're just a little girl growing up. And um, I remember a story about a paper route. Yes. And you just growing up delivering papers and running everywhere. So enlighten yeah. us. Tell us. Tell us all about your childhood. <laughs> So little Soraya starts off at six years old. Um, every time I mention the word paper out in Utah, they think neighborhood routes. 50 papers, you deliver a little neighborhood, and you go. That was not my childhood. My mom and dad got a paper out to make money on the side because we had, well, at that time only four kids, but we ended up having eight kids in California, which is literally impossible money-wise. <laughs> And so they had to get a side job, and that was what they chose. So we had to get up at 12.30 in the morning and then drive 30 minutes to get the papers, fold the papers. So all of you people with tattoos, yeah, I bet I have more ink than you do in my hands <laughs> from years of paper out and folding those papers yeah. together. And then we left the shed, assuming the truck came on time, and we probably started around 1, 1 1.30 on the paper out. And then we would deliver until 4.30, 5 um, in the morning. And then school days, so elementary school, pretty easy, right? You go to school around 7.30, 8 o'clock, not too bad. Probably got a couple hours of sleep before. Uh, junior high got a little more hard. You were going to school a little earlier. And then high school, um, being LDS, we had early morning seminary at 5.45 in the morning. So you come home, we do our run in the morning because our coach requires to do three days a week of early morning runs. And then you go to seminary and then you go to school, six classes. There's no AB classes where I was growing <laughs> up. You guys are so lucky. Uh, and we then, didn't have that either. No, they Kids have these it easy. days. <laughs> they have it easy. <laughs> and then I would come home. And do a little homework, go to practice, and come home from practice. And then in high school, my parents, my dad stopped doing the paper out years ago. My mom still was doing it, so 20 years um, is how long she ended up doing it in the end. High school, we had to do that. And then at night, one day a week, I went to a dental office cleaning job with my dad. And then one night a week, I would go with my brothers. And so that was my high school, also wow. trying to run fast. Yeah, yeah. Um, the paper route had a lot of stairs. I mean, my parents would, my mom would drop me off. We'd run the whole area. We'd come back. I mean, this is early, right? I'm six, seven, eight years old, sprinting in the dark by myself. <laughs> it's a little scary. Right, right. You don't know is that why you went fast? Yeah, yeah. It was like <laughs> nice. intervals every day. <laughs> you didn't know if you're going to run to a drunk person, a gangbanger, oh, or a coyote. Shoot. Or a coyote. <laughs> yeah. Nice. They didn't have good back then. So you're running in the dark. The best time was oh. rollerblading. When my mom loves oh, rollerblading to do it. Yeah, that was yeah. always a good time. We also had accidents on the paper route, like 
My sister had her head slammed in the sliding door, like the door closed oh, no. while we took a turn. Oh, shoot. I fell out of the car when my mom turned. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time I was holding on and I wasn't on the bumper all the way, and so she took off and I was literally like running behind it, like trying to jump on real quick. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes you do that on purpose. But... On purpose. <laughs> nice. <laughs> my dad backed up on my leg one time. Really? I flipped off the back of the car, got ran over by my dad. <laughs> so, good times. Good times. It sounds like it, yeah. And is that how you got into running? Like, uh, or was I it kind of a family thing? Did you all run? I think that's why we all were kind of good at running. is okay. because we had so much running experience right, by the time right. we actually got into it. And it was actually just a coincidence. Like, my older sister went out for the high school team, but we really didn't get into it until my mom took us to Gromian Park because apparently running on the paper is not enough for our family. <laughs> she has to take us to go get energy out of us. Oh, fantastic. So she was like, go run this loop and come back. We're like, okay. So we went running and there happened to be actually a really good club out there running for okay. practice. All right. We ran into the coach and he was like, he saw my brother and he's like, get that kid a good pair of shoes and be a decent <laughs> runner. I think he was running in basketball shorts. Oh, nice. The time. Yeah, yeah. from Walmart. Right, right. <laughs> So yeah, so that's how we kind of got okay. into more club running. And they were, they had multiple teams in the top three in the nation. So they oh, actually wow. ended up being a okay. really good comp team. Right, right. Yeah, nice. That was my childhood. So when people were sleeping, I was awake. You were running. <laughs> I was awake. <laughs> nice. Awesome. What brought you to Utah? Uh, so I got a scholarship at Weber State, a uh, full ride, which is always great. Yeah, I for was sure. trying to decide between Utah State and Weber State. BYU kind of got turned off when I went to their summer camp. Didn't really love their coach, but I have lots of friends who loved it there. So I'm not uh -huh. saying BYU's bad, but uh, so for me, it was between Utah State and Weber State, and I thought Weber okay. State's team was more home feeling. Nice, nice. So. Well, good choice. I'm glad you came to Weber State. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so what did you run? Steeplechase, right? Yeah, and I did steeple what, what else? and 1500 outdoor. Okay. Five K. If I had to get points. If you had to. It was the worst. <laughs> like, why you choose to do a five K on a track is just that yeah, is yeah. dabbling. That in sounds hard. Terrible things right there. <laughs> that and the ten K. <laughs> uh, so I did. They steeple. did that on the track too. Yeah. Oh my outdoor goodness. Outdoor had ten K. Indoor had five K. Okay. Uh, and and outdoor had five K too, but uh, I did the steeple and the fifteen, so I was still a little more speedy, so I can get yeah, like a mile. Yeah. Right. Right. And then indoor, I did the mile, the mile of the DMR, and the 3K. Okay. The mile. So you have run a really fast mile. I remember tra I remember <laughs> training with you. So there was a time in my life when I thought that I wanted to run fast. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, Soraya, I need you to help me run a five-minute mile. And the fastest I had ever run was probably in high school, a six-minute mile. This is probably... 15 years yeah. out of high school, <laughs> yeah. I weigh significantly more. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I'm going to run a six minute mile. Um, and so Soraya was gracious enough to come to the track with me and, and we were working at five minute mile pace and I am dying. Like literally this is the closest I've ever been to throwing up. I don't throw up when I work out and we'll talk more about that later, <laughs> but <laughs> The closest I have ever been is is running with Soraya, and I can't keep up. Like I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. I'm I'm struggling. We're running just one lap at a time, right, at five minute pace, and I can't I can't keep up. And Soraya's like, maybe we should do five fifteens. <laughs> <laughs> and so the whole time I'm dying to keep up. She's all, you're slowing down, faster, faster. You're slowing down. You're slowing down. She's like perfectly calm. <laughs> even stride not even breathing heavy <laughs> and it it just blow my blows my mind and impresses me that someone is so fast <laughs> but i believe isn't your fastest like a 406 or something no i wish no that'd be a good guy's that's what i tell everybody <laughs> that's a guy's so i ran 458 in high school 458 okay and then in college i ran like a 448 converted that's so really fast. You get converted time if you're higher in altitude. So I oh, ran that okay. at Pocatello. Okay. So converted wise, it was a 448, but that was just in conference. It wasn't yeah. like the open mile. I literally was running three races that okay. weekend. Right, so right. Not bad. <laughs> well, 458 sounds really fast to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and that event actually, so I ran like a sub five at that conference. 
um, in my mile, but I beat an NAU girl, which was pretty amazing. So we took it out. We let somebody take it out. I let them go. And then it was going too slow. So I took it after almost a 400 or right getting close to a 400. So I was like, okay, I'll take it because nobody's going to take it. So I took the lead and then she, the NAU girl followed me. We actually were running side by side and then lap after lap. And after a while, I was like, wow, she's really not going to help me, is she? She's just uh-huh. going to let me lead this whole thing. <laughs> and I was like, there's no way I'm going to let this girl beat me. I'm like, I'm not nice. going to lead this whole thing and let NAU, a foreigner, beat me. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, we were State and NAU have the worst rivalry. We Do they really? I didn't know them. that. Yeah. Oh, they wow. just brag every time they win, so we uh-huh. beat them. <laughs> nice. And so... <laughs> We're coming and like in my mind, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? So I start edging her out to the outside of lane one because I'm like, if you're going to have to run, you're going to run further. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) So I edge her slowly, but not too much because then she could go around and just move in. Okay. So I push her out to the outside of lane one. I'm mean like that. And (laughs) And then I was like, I bet she's going to go 400 to go. She's not going to wait for the last lap. She's going to wait to 400 because indoor we have 200 meter laps. Oh, okay. Right, right. And so... I, at 400, I start going, like, before I even get to that mark. I'm like, I'm going to go. So I yeah. start moving up with, like, 10, 20 meters before the 400. And then I just put on another gear. And then she's, like, it catches her off guard. But uh-huh. she, she's fine. I mean, she's way faster than I am, so it's not a big deal for her. So we're going around together still. And then I'm like, okay, I'm going to throw on another gear on this last lap because I know she's just going to go yeah, for it. And right, her speed's right. better than mine. So if I don't respond quick, like, uh-huh. I'm done. And so we come around the corner, and I'm doing it on the, that straightaway before the turn again. I start speeding up, and then she starts speeding up. So now we're like side by side, stride for stride, going around the last lap. And everybody's yelling because that's never happens. Like, <laughs> you just beats us. Really? Okay. And so we're coming yeah. around, and I am like, in my mind, I'm like, I am not going to get beat by this girl. Uh-huh. And I just like, everything I have left, like, regardless, I'm running two more races after this. I was like, yeah. I don't even care. <laughs> and I just like kick it in, and she pulls up like the last three strides and uh-huh. I, I got her oh nice and then i came back and beat her again <laughs> same type of race oh that's fantastic <laughs> oh i literally that time uh-huh but, nice yeah, very good it was a good race so your mind your mindset when you're running is something i've always been really impressed with like <laughs> Soraya does not like to lose. And you see that with a lot of super competitive athletes, obviously, but but Soraya is probably more <laughs> more that way than anybody else I know where where when she decides she's going to win, she's going to win whatever it takes. Like I I feel like you wouldn't even hesitate to to cause long-term bodily harm no, to no, win a race. Which I have done. <laughs> which you have done. Of course you have. <laughs> um and it's man, it impresses me, and I I just love to watch and hear about her races. And so one of my one of my favorite Soraya stories. I I tell a lot of Soraya stories. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> was was a Bryce Canyon half marathon, oh, yeah. where you were sick. You had food poisoning or something, right? Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Yeah. That one. <laughs> um, and maybe I'll let you tell it since I botched the last. <laughs> The last story I told. But... <laughs> <laughs> so we, I ran a half marathon in Bryce Canyon. So we drove down there and then we ended up just camping, uh, which is my preferred method of staying over the night if I could. Uh, camping like a mile from the start at, I think it's called Rose Campground or something like that. I don't even know. Anyways, so we camp. So I wake up, jog down to the start and I'm like, eh, that's good enough. <laughs> and so we get on the line i'm feeling great ready to go i'm excited it's a little cold at the start i mean 7200 feet and we get going and we hit our first mile and it's right where i want it controlled i let a girl just go because i was like i know what i can do and can't do i'll let her go and hopefully she comes back and uh and then we get to the second mile and it's starting to go downhill and i was like okay like we're still good i'm slowly gating on her a little bit which is what i want to do and then we hit our third mile, and the third mile is just, like, crazy steep downhill. I hit, like, a 505 on it, oh, I mean, man. which is crazy for a half marathon. You're right, right. running, like, yeah, 545. Sure. Uh-huh. That's how steep it is. That's not even trying. Wow. So she's hitting, like, a 458, you know? Like, she's that much more ahead of me. And so I'm like, that's going to hit her hard. Like, there's yeah, no right, way right. you're going to recover from that and be able to keep going. So I was like, okay, we're good. Just, like, stay even. So I, I get to my fourth mile. 
and all of a sudden my stomach is not happy. And I think it was just that downhill, probably whatever we ate camping, uh-huh. <laughs> that agree well with me. Oh. And so I get to the fifth mile, and I'm like, I don't know if I, I didn't hold it. Like, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. Uh-huh. So I see there's an aid station coming up, and I actually saw her stop, which is so rare in hmm. a race. Like, nobody right, right. stops through aid station. So I was like, well, I'm going to go real quick. Nobody competitive. No, we, nobody competitive. We always stop yeah. at the aid stations. <laughs> That's true. The top runners don't. <laughs> So I go real quick and then come out and I'm like, okay, I have to gain gain on her again. So I start picking it back up and I was able to catch back up to her again. And as soon as I catch her, like my stomach hits me again. I'm like, come on. So I stopped drinking things. I stopped oh, eating things. Shoot. So you can only imagine the cramping that's starting Right, to right. So I go again and I come out and I'm like having to catch up to her again, which I do. But now I'm like cramping. Like it's starting oh, my calves. No. It's going up to my quads. I mean, I am cramping. And I'm like, no, I refuse. I caught her <laughs> twice now. Like, I cannot let her beat me. So now she's, like, smarter. She's like, I'll just run with her for a while. And probably in her mind, I'll kick her. Yeah. And uh, so we're running stride for stride for stride. Like, feeling like I'm trying to, I'm allowing her to let me catch my breath. I'm like, that's smart of you. I mean, not really. but. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so then we get to the last couple of miles and I'm like, no, I will not get beat by you. I uh-huh. refuse. Like I saw it twice. I caught you twice. Like, no, I will not get beat. <laughs> and so I end up pulling off the win, but she beat me the next year. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she learned. Oh, shoot. <laughs> but Darn afterwards, it. she did come up to me and she's like, I cannot believe you saw it twice. <laughs> and <laughs> it still, still caught, caught back up, up to me. <laughs> that is so awesome. So it nice. was cool. And I feel like there's probably a lot of stories like that. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, like I'm once, once Soraya is determined to win, that's what she's going to do. And yeah. it's awesome. I think one mindset I have that's slightly different is I never go into a race feeling defeated. And I mm. think a lot of people think, oh, well, that person's fast or that person's fast. So right, I'll probably right. get this place. Like, I all know people are fast and I don't care. Like, uh-huh. I still want to win. Because yeah, in yeah, my yeah. mind, everybody has a bad day. So if you're not ready for their for bad sure. day, you're never going to beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I always try to go into a race with the mindset that like, anything is possible. Yeah, that's awesome. I have, I have a similar mindset um, when, I'm, when I'm playing. So, so I, I played volleyball for a really long time. I don't anymore. But, <laughs> but inevitably, I would always end up matched up against teams that are clearly better than me and and should definitely win and I always played my best volleyball against them and took my it more yeah right right <laughs> took it more serious well I don't more know practice <laughs> I don't know how serious I took it, but, it right <laughs> but uh but really like you said everybody can have a bad day and that's something that I always I always had in my mind I'm like realistically I can beat this person every one out of 10 games and this is going to be that one yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it could be this time i'm going to go for it yeah. so they might beat me every other time but i'm going to try and win now um, exactly and i think that i mean that mindset just helps a lot in competition because yeah. you never know everybody can have a bad day or i might have a fantastic one and, exactly. and if they both happen then things are good so yep. and i think also <laughs> a lot of people win because of other people having that mindset right right that could yeah. probably be beat so. yeah yeah for sure awesome are there people that inspire you as far as like runners like do you look up to no to runners that are out there i really like, don't i okay. think that's funny so i've had lots of friends who are like hey did you see what this person's doing uh-huh. even now on our group um strand like they'll like post people like olympic Olympians, yeah right right you know and how they're doing and i don't know i just have never considered them better Okay. And like, I mean, I'm kind of that way with everything. Like yeah, celebrities, right, right. I'm just like, they're just people. I don't know uh-huh. why we give them more of a voice than you and I. <laughs> right, right. So I kind of feel the same way about runners. I just think, you know, they're they're really just like us. There is one runner that I admire um, for her tenacity, and that is... Um, is it Courtney DeWalter? Yes. <laughs> Courtney DeWalter is like my hero. She I don't is know amazing. Her. She <laughs> definitely doesn't know me, uh-huh. but I have listened to several of her podcasts and like okay. looked up every once in a while when she comes up in the news, like how yeah. she's doing. Like she is an animal, <laughs> like a right, cool right. animal. Like I don't, sure. I don't know how mentally she just she takes it further than I can take it mentally. Uh-huh. I have a point I get to, and then I think I have a safety zone. 
Hmm. And then I pull back and I can feel okay. that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Courtney DeWalter doesn't. Doesn't have one. No. Doesn't have that. She just like takes it to the extreme, which is admiring. I wish I could shut that off. Right, right. right. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know Courtney DeWalter, and I, I don't know much about her either, except she's probably the best distance runner. Distance like runner. Ultra. ultra, ultra, ultra yeah, yeah. So like runner. people run marathons and, and 50Ks and and 50 milers and sometimes 100 milers and she's running like 200, 200 milers, plus milers <laughs> yeah. 24 hour yeah it's just it's unreal 72 hour competition she's uh-huh. crazy good yeah 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 so i i enjoy following her too yeah. even though i have no aspirations of ever running that far <laughs> <I know. laughs> but but it's fun, it's fun to watch people that are good at what they do and that are just above and beyond everybody else know, like there's there's definitely levels to to competition and levels to to everything that mm-hmm. people do and and she's just like way up there yeah. <laughs> so so it's fun it's fun for me to watch that um and beyond that i probably couldn't even tell you another runner but i know courtney de <laughs> me too, don't worry <laughs> <laughs> um so right out was it was it while you were still at Weber State, or had you just graduated yeah. when you went to the trials. the trials? Yeah, so my senior year, I was very fortunate to train with Lindsay Anderson, who went to the Olympics in um, the steeplechase. So I was fortunate that she still was running with our team at the time and gave me a training partner, quote unquote. I was never with her, but I was behind <laughs> her, <laughs> cheering for her. <laughs> So I qualified for the trials in the steeplechase, but I was so burnt out from that event that uh, I actually didn't want to go. Really? <laughs> it oh, took wow. a lot of convincing to get me there. Yeah, yeah. I had a really just poor year of racing. I was all American, so I guess it wasn't the worst. You know, I, I think I ended up <laughs> like seventh in the nation. Okay, that's but, that's a terrible year. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like my, my times weren't great. I was trying uh-huh. to break 10 and I just kept hitting 10.07, 10.08, 10.07, oh, okay. 10.08. Like, and that's for a that's for a two mile race, almost right? Two miles, yeah, almost three, two miles. Almost two miles. 3K, yeah. Wow. And so okay. I was frustrated. I was like, why can I not just break 10? Like my yeah, workouts show right, I can right. break 10, but I just could not break 10. And so finally, Coach Hislop, who was actually the men's coach, I probably because Nate talked to him that Nate's my husband. He, he told him I wasn't going to go because I just hated that event uh-huh. so much by that point. And so he convinced me to go. And he's like, you will regret it if you don't. And mm. I was like, oh, I hate regret money. <laughs> Which I do. I yeah, literally yeah. will like do things just because I don't want to regret it. So right, like, right. So yeah, so I went to the Olympic trials, and I always try to clarify, Olympic trials, people like to think it's Olympics, <laughs> it's not, I'm not that cool, uh, but I did go to the trials, and I I think I took 11th, 11. 11. and I did break 10. And is that is that 12, 12 people? 12 people in the finals, in the finals. so I made to the finals, and then I took 11th. So, so while she's saying she's not that cool, she didn't go to the Olympics, she was top 12 in the nation in the race. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> That's true. A sponsored athlete. Yeah, right, right. And I remember getting on the line with all these sponsored professional uh-huh. athletes. There's a few of us college runners in there. And I was like, they're just regular people. Like, I remember yeah. like just like looking at the Olympics like, this is amazing. I can't wait. I can't uh-huh. believe you can go there. It must be such a cool feeling. And then I got on the line. I was like, oh, it's just another race. Like It wasn't as impressive as I thought it was going to be. The most impressive part was having that little cool badge that got you into everywhere. <laughs> that was cool. That's cool, yeah. <laughs> oh, and I, I love that attitude. They're, they're just people. They like, really were just they, people. I mean, I mean, they're fast people. Right, like, right. Incredible athletes. Right. But I remember just thinking, like, oh, this wasn't what I expected. Hmm. So I like uh, that I finally got to that point in my career where I can just consider them my competitors and not somebody that I can never compete with. Right, like, right. So... That's awesome. Very good. So after college and after the Olympic trials, you decided to run further races. <laughs> like I was I've always kind, I've always friends. kind of wondered yeah. about that, how you transition from a three K steeplechase race to a marathons Marathon. and stuff. <laughs> no. Yeah. And let's say I never liked the five K. I always thought uh-huh. cross country was too long. It was a six K. <laughs> <laughs> But once your friends start running marathons and they're like, you're training with them, oh, you kind of right, just right. do it. I uh, mean, uh, who was your friend that was on last week? Uh, the 
Oh, Jeff. Yeah, Jeff. Yes. When yeah, Jeff yeah, yeah. was talking about how he just like tags along with things that are right, crazy, right. like that was me. I'm like, okay, okay you guys okay. are running a marathon. I'll run a marathon. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That's <laughs> I'm funny. doing the workouts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so, it went fairly well for you, um, transitioning the marathons. No, I. So I, I remember. Your, train, I remember your first one. Yeah, I tried to trade myself, which probably not the best idea. <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to train yourself, at least just get really good advice. Like one thing that's great mm. about our group is we're not afraid to tell you what to do. We, okay. I yeah, mean, yeah. we're competitive within our races, but we right. also like to see people succeed. So we'll never be like secretive about what we do. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. I've gone out and told friends what I was doing. I'm like, at the end of the day, you still have to do and beat me, you know? So, right, right. For sure. Uh, so yeah, so I tried to train myself and I think I trained too much and too long. Oh. And then I was overly confident when I went in. Because, uh -huh. I mean, you go from running a fast mile or a fast 2K, a two mile, and then you're like, oh, I only have to slow down 630. Like, <laughs> I can run 630 all day. Yeah, right, I did that yeah. on my regular runs. Okay. So I did that and Nate told me he like was adamant. He's like, do not take you a halfway. Take it before. Hmm. He's like, you will feel like you don't need it, but you should take it no matter what. And so this is Nate, her husband, who was yeah. also a, a he runner. He did a marathon at that point too. Okay. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, yeah, sounds great. I took it a halfway. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm one of those people that I have to fall to really learn something. Right, right. Like, it's really a, good way, to, it's a good way to learn. Yeah, scrape up my elbows. <laughs> so I took it a halfway because I was feeling great. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. hit it and hit the wall at 18, which is a typical spot to hit a right. wall in a marathon. And just suffer fested until I was still leading by this point, which uh -huh. is incredible. So I get to three miles to go, and I'm like, I'm still in the lead. Like, how is this even possible? Mm. I am going slow at this point. Like, uh -huh. barely. I am, like, walking through aid stations. <laughs> it's like, I am guzzling water. I am really suffering. My body is not wanting to run at this point. I get to the last 800, and this is where I met Anna Judd for the first oh, time. Oh, okay. She was a lot older than I was. Um, but she casually runs by me not sprinting. oh no <laughs> she just casually runs by and i cannot run oh I am like, shoot Nate's like she's in the last 800 she's meters yeah and i'm like i can't i can't run <laughs> my body will not go oh no so i got beat in that race i still ran a sub three which is which is uh -huh. pretty good for my first one but it was and she still didn't beat you by very much at all right no and, not much yeah, yeah. but she doesn't let me live that down. I, I imagine. <laughs> As she should it. Right. Oh, for sure. Expect nothing less. <laughs> it was a painful first experience. Wow. But I mean, to finish second yeah. in your first marathon. Yeah, in Ogden. Which and only because you crashed. Yeah. Not <laughs> right. bad. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. yeah training yeah. myself. That's not too bad. <laughs> right. Right. And then after that. Um, you ran more marathons after that, right? Or no? Yeah. My second one, I didn't train. I just jumped into it because I found, okay. found out nobody was running it. It's their first year. And I was like, uh -huh. I can hurt six miles. So really, I mean, never big run 20. It's the last six. I can suffer. <laughs> I'm like, I can suffer for six yeah, miles yeah, yeah. for $1,100. Oh, wow. That's exactly what it was. Oh, nice. <laughs> I did suffer, but I did win it. And I ran three hours flat on that one. Okay. Not training. Not training. So that was, that was pretty That's good. I had amazing. a good conversation with the person for most of it. Uh -huh. And then he left me. And then he came back because he fell. And I caught back up to him. Oh, and okay. we kind of finished together. So he finished right under three. So that was really cool for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then after that, um, it was just a learning process. Like right. figuring out my stomach, figuring out fueling, and then gooing. And yeah, by the end, I got a lot better. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nice. So how many have you run? Uh, six. Six. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So my last one was Ogden again. Oh, because, okay. Because, you know, uh -huh. you can't get defeated in a race. <laughs> so my first Ogden, I crashed and burned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did okay. My second Ogden, I had a horrible year of running, which I think was due to hmm. little iron. Oh, I learned okay. a lesson to check my iron at the start of every season uh -huh. after that. Uh, so I dropped out of that one to save okay. myself for my last right. race and then being pregnant on my last race. Oh. So still took second, but I was nice. really weaving at the end. <laughs> <laughs> and then my third Ogden, I was like, I will not be defeated by this yeah, race. Like yeah, yeah. literally. So I asked Riley Cook what he was doing because he was a really good marathoner okay. at the time or still is. But at the time he really was like figuring out his issues that he was right. having with marathoning. So I took his training. I took a little bit of what Ed Eyestone, how he trained us back in 2013 at the time. So now we're 2017. 
and then I took like my weaknesses. Like my oh, weakness okay. was I was slowed down at the end. So I'm, yeah, like, I did right, a lot right. of progressive workouts. Hmm. And then my mental side was pretty weak too. So I did a lot of boring stuff, like where I would do like a bunch of laps around a track for a workout. Okay. Yeah, or I yeah. would do like a two mile loop over and over and over and over hmm. again. Because like my mental side, when I get bored, and then I start to think about the pain. Right, right. So I had to learn how to like dial that in in my training. So okay. when I got to my race, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah. And then I talked to a friend and he helped me like pace the whole race. So I had oh, okay. splits I oh, knew nice. I was going to hit on certain times. So yeah, I never ran yeah. it even. There was either a hill that you slowed down for or a downhill you okay. speed up for. Right, right. And that really that makes just sense. nailed it. So Nice. Yeah, so I ended up getting the course record on that one. And uh, I ran 242, which had I run that wow. sea level qualified meet, would qualify me for the Olympic trials for the yeah. marathon. Yeah, yeah. But, I've never really had a desire to do the marathon trials, mostly because it doesn't seem hard to get. And so uh, it's not enough of a challenge for me to put everything I have into it. That makes sense. So yeah, yeah. not a big enough goal. I think if right. they were to make it harder and faster, then maybe I would want to pursue that. Uh -huh. um, but I don't know. I feel like if I can mostly train and qualify, yeah, I just, yeah. it doesn't feel prestige <laughs> to me anymore. Right. For so. sure. For sure. That makes sense. So, yeah. Wow, a 242, you said? Yeah. So I still have it. <laughs> That's crazy. People come close, but still nice. hold it Nice, the course record. <laughs> That's awesome. So speaking of pregnant, how many kids do you have? Four. Four kids. Yep. Boys. 11 down to two, all, all boys. All boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of testosterone. And they're, and they're starting to run, right? Uh, you... No, they don't love running. <laughs> oh, okay. Weren't, I make them weren't, do you for coach, exercise. weren't you coaching them? I did coach, yeah. Okay. So they, I always make my kids pick a sport. I don't care what it is, as long uh -huh. as they're doing something. They didn't want to pick a sport that year, so I made them do cross country. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> and they did not love it. Uh, they loved it. They actually did. They didn't, like, it's not what they want to do, but they yeah. had fun going and okay. being friends. Oh, good. And of course, you know, as a coach, I took that way too seriously. <laughs> and I had paces and like, I'd go off my yeah, wheel, yeah. wheel out like their courses oh, for practice uh -huh. to make sure they're exact, you know, splits. <laughs> and I would do splits with them. Like, uh -huh. but we also had a lot of fun. We played a lot of games and tag and oh, relays. That's fun. And yeah, we always yeah. had a treat at the end. And I think we nice. had a lot of fun. Like the parents seemed to really appreciate it because it was yeah. more of a serious program. But it also their kids still were having a lot of fun. I think that's huge. There are so many kids that, that end up being really good, but they burn out because they aren't having fun anymore. Yeah. I've seen a lot of that, <laughs> uh -huh. actually. Yeah, yeah. So I, I always think about Andre Agassi, Agassi, Andre Agassi, the tennis player yeah. from a long time ago. Yeah. Um, where he... He wrote, wrote his his autobiography, and I read his autobiography, and I had no idea, but he said, I hated tennis. Like, he, he literally was the best in the world for, for quite some time, and he said, I hate tennis. I don't even like it. Like, his dad pushed him yeah. from the time he was a little kid, and, and he just, he grew to resent it, and he was phenomenal at it, but but he wasn't having fun anymore, and I think that's so important for, for kids especially. Yeah. Um, I mean, once it becomes a career, maybe that's something different. But Yeah, I think as parents, like we need to make sure we're not trying to pursue what we wish we could have done for yeah. our children yeah, yeah. and let our kids decide what they want to do. I mean, it's not to say it's bad to push them, you know, like yeah. if you sign yeah, up yeah. for a comp team, like they should be expected to do comp level. We're not going to just gonna let them not do it. For but at sure, the same time, sure. like I think we need to pull ourselves out of the situation just uh -huh. because we were a runner, we were a basketball player, doesn't mean our kids should be a runner and our kids should be a basketball right, player. Right, right. Like, let's let them find their passions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Passion is a powerful thing. It is. It makes you better and faster. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And better. Yep. And doing hard things. <laughs> yeah, like, definitely doing hard things. <laughs> we definitely do want to push our kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, and ourselves. And I think you understand that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As well as anyone, for yeah. sure. Um. I think there's just, this is kind of the, the overlying theme of the podcast is that hard things make you better. And, and that's really when you grow, when you're struggling. Um, and so I don't know what your thoughts on that are. I, I think I know what your thoughts are, but do you want to want to talk about that at all? Yeah. <laughs> Listening to the last podcast, I was getting ideas of like, do I do hard things? How often do I do hard things? And I think one thing for me 
everybody has their reason to do hard things, right? And you guys talked about how like you just wanted to see how if you can push yourselves and how far you can get and try new things and and I always thought like why do I do hard things? Like what motivates me? Because a lot of the stuff is self motivation. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not going out there and getting accolades for the stuff that I mm. do most of the time. And so I was thinking like, why do I do hard things? Yeah. And I find I don't do them often because I do tend to get so serious about it. Okay, um, right, right. But I think it's just that, like pushing yourself. Like uh-huh. what can you do? What can your body do? Like what crazy achievement can you get? Can you encourage or even inspire someone to do yeah, something harder? Right, and I think right. for me, a lot of it is inspiration. Like. I want to inspire somebody else to do something hard. Uh-huh. Like I want them to see that and think, oh, she can do that. Like maybe I can do that, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. my inspiration to do hard things is I want to show people it's possible. Nice. And so when I think of like, what was something hard that I did? I was talking to my husband about that. I'm like, cause I've done crazy things, lots of crazy things, but I'm like, what is something that stands out as like the craziest? Uh huh. And I think that vertical challenge like keeps coming back. Oh, that is yeah, my yeah. absolute craziest thing I've done. So tell everybody ever. a little bit about that. So two years ago, I had a friend come to me and she is like, hey, there's this cool vertical challenge. It's $30, really cheap. It's online. You just do it virtually. And I was like, okay, that sounds great. I'll go climb Malins once a week together. And, you know, like it'll get me on the trails more. I'm like, that sounds fun. Like sign me up. I'll be on your team. Uh-huh. And she's like, okay, cool. So me and her were on a team and then our other friend, Missy and Anna were on another team. And so we were two days out and Nate and I were hunting and um, we ended up, we're hunting on the first day of the challenge. And so he's like, I'll just hunt you around the mountain and you can get some vertical in too. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, okay, that sounds good. So we, we uh, hunt that day, then we get like 2000, which is almost laughable now because of what i've done in the end <laughs> but i was like all right 2000 that's a great it sounds start. good right yeah right. we got like five miles in six miles in uh-huh. so and the goal the goal is to accumulate as a team the most so you have a team climbing in a yeah, month you a, or you have a team uh, accumulation and then you have an individual accumulation okay. so you can right. double dip on prizes oh yeah so yeah. they end up having prizes and uh-huh. when I looked at their prizes, I was like, these are good prizes, hmm. which usually means good competition. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, what did I just get myself into <laughs> after I signed up and started? So I go uh-huh. to, you have to go online and input what you did, either okay. through Strava. I would always do my Garmin um, app just because yeah, I right, felt like right. it was more accurate than Strava was. And uh, so I go on there to put my stuff in and everybody's like seven to 8,000. Oh no. I'm already <laughs> like, I think I was 79th place <laughs> oh, <laughs> the first well. day. And in my mind, I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> I was like, I will not be in 79. Right, place. right, of course. So, of course, what do I do? The stupidest uh, thing you can do, you go out the next day and you start hiking. You're like, you start yeah. climbing like a crazy person. You're going to make it all up in yeah, one day. I'm going to make yep. it all up. Because in my mind, I'm like, well, if they're doing 7,000, I have to do 9,000 today because mm. I have to catch up to what they've already done. Right. And so I go out and I just start doing what where I feel like it's the steepest. I'm yeah. doing laps on mainlands, but like going all the way up and all the way back to my car. I was okay, doing right, right. Indian Trail, so I was going all the way from 22nd Street to Smokey the Bear, sign, yeah, and then back, which is like eight miles and three thousand vert. Okay, mainlands is like five miles and twenty one hundred vert. Like uh-huh. it's just so everybody knows. Um, so I'm doing this, and the first week I am sore, right? Like <laughs> it's a different animal oh, for running sure. yeah, high yeah. vertical and then running on the roads. <laughs> so I realized when you're on the trails running, doing vertical and then running back down to save time, um, it's a backside workout. Like your your um, erectors, so your mm-hmm. posture muscles. Your hips, your hamstrings, your calves are all getting a workout. Yeah, right? yeah. Your abs, shot. Like, they, you don't even use your abs that much because you're so <laughs> bent over. Uh-huh. But on the roads, you're more upright. So you use more abs, you have more quads, okay. you have more, like, anterior tibs, which is the front of your legs, your shins. Um, so I realized, like, there's a difference. There's a stark difference between the two. Yeah, so yeah, So I yeah. am sore. Like, one day I came home, I had done Malin's in the morning, and I did it, like, two more times that night. One time with a friend, and then one time by myself. Uh-huh. I got, I started coming down, and my hamstrings were shot. Like, I couldn't even walk down Malin's. Oh, it was no. so bad. I got back to my car, 
had to go do a massage because I put it off for so long. Because I thought I was going to get <laughs> oh, back shoot. earlier, but I couldn't right, get right. off the yeah. mountain. So oh, I, I come home, I'm crying. I'm like hurting so bad. I can't get my shoes off because I can't bend over to do it. And my groceries <laughs> wouldn't let me. And I couldn't use my foot to get it off because you flex your hands. Right, right. So yeah. you use your foot. Yeah, yeah. So Nate, he's like, it's okay. I'm like, this is stupid. Why am I doing this? This is the worst <laughs> thing I've ever done in my life. I'm like, this is dumb. I'm just hurting all the time. Uh-huh. I hurt all the time. And he was like, you're okay. Take a deep breath. And I'm like crying. And he's like, I'll take your shoes off. He's like, I'm going to go to the store and get you some ibuprofen. Oh. And then I'm like, so I do the massage and I foam roll really good. I take 800 ibuprofen. Uh-huh. I take a hot bath. I foam roll again. And then I go to sleep and I'm like, wake up at 4.30, right? To do it again. To do it again. You have right. to do it every day. Like you uh-huh. miss a day, you're behind. You're pretty much out of top yeah. 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so by this point, I have, I started to gain on that top 10. I okay. think I was in like 12th or 13th at this time. Up from 79. Yeah, nice. from 79. Like I made a huge, <laughs> huge jump yeah, right, in yeah, the yeah. first week. And so then um, I woke up and I was got ready and I was like, oh my goodness, my hamstrings feel amazing. Huh. So I think oh, like wow. I just had so much inflammation in my yeah, legs from right. that first week that that ibuprofen just kicked it right out of me. Wow. I like literally lost inches in my legs. Like it was crazy. <laughs> And so I went out the next morning, 5 a.m., up at Abuse Trailhead by myself, you know, for the first couple. And then my friend would meet me because she wasn't doing as much as I was doing. Yeah. And then we do some together. She'd leave and I'd do a couple more and then I'd go home. Okay. And my problem was I worked all day, so I didn't have the time to go out and do it. Right, right. And then right. Nate was also, it was October, so he gets really busy with Division of Wildlife during that time. Okay. So he's yeah, not yeah. always home to watch the kids. And so I try to get as much as I could in the morning. So if I had to get up at 4, 4.30, I would. Yeah. There was two times I got up at 4. and No, I got up at 3. Oh, I started man. at 3.30 because Nate had to leave for work at 5.30. <laughs> so I ran Indian Trail in the dark by myself 3.30 at in the morning. At 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> it was scary. I, I bet. Was scared I scared in the morning on yeah, the trails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was definitely the hardest part oh. of that whole challenge was those two days back right. to back running early. And that was after they had that cougar sighting oh. that my friend sent me a video of the night oh, before no. I was going out oh, to do shoot. it. So I was a little scared. Yeah, yeah. But so that vertical challenge, I ended up um, ninth overall. My last day was Halloween and I probably should have spent just all day hiking uh-huh. like everybody else that didn't have kids did. But right, I decided right. my kids were worth it more. So I tried That's to do as awesome. much as I could the day before. So the uh-huh. day before I did 33 miles total. I did three <laughs> 33 hikes. miles. Yeah. Nice. I did like Thurston Peak. I did Maylands in the morning. Oh. And I came back and did Maylands again in the evening. Wow. Like I did a lot. Or not yeah. Maylands. I did above Weber State. Oh, okay. So I ended up like ninth overall. The second girl, the girl, okay, the girl beat me in the last day. She oh, wasn't, no. she wasn't running her stuff into the last yeah. minute. Right, right. So she just went out that day and just hiked all day long, mm. all day long, and she beat me by like two hundred feet vertical. Oh, so no. I almost was the first girl. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. so I ended up seventy nine miles my first week. So in seven wow. days. My second week, I was 95 miles. Uh-huh. My third week, I was 134 <laughs> miles. My fourth week, I was 143 miles. Oh, and my And then goodness. my last three days, I was 75 miles. That is crazy. <laughs> so, and and those are a lot of climbing miles. Yeah, those so aren't half, just regular yeah, flat miles. Half of those miles are steep up there. Oh, Maitland's man. Up yeah, right, right. So in the end, I ran like 288,000 vertical feet oh, and like, wow. so eight times up, um, uh, eight times up, um, oh, what's the mountain? The tallest one. Everest. Everest. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's like eight times Everest really? in one month. So it was cool. <laughs> Not as cool as the guy who won. He was an animal. But uh-huh. that what was did, probably, he, get? Was he had like 344 or something. Wow. Yeah, he was he was crazy. He just did the same one uh-huh, every day, really, multiple times. I don't know how like mentally he did that. <laughs> that yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah. And the other part was like I was up against trail runners. Like I wasn't even a trail runner at the time. So uh-huh. a lot of these people have done ultra races and trail okay. races. Like I was just a road runner trying yeah, to figure out yeah, how yeah. to trail run. <laughs> so I, I was pretty proud of myself. Yeah, like, oh, my that's, knowledge was that's insignificant. Fantastic. <laughs> I learned a lot though, uh-huh. but that was by far the hardest thing I've yeah, ever yeah, done. Yeah. I mean, mentally, like going out each day when you're exhausted, dead, 
nobody's meeting you at the start. Uh-huh. Like, that was hard. It was a lot of oh, lonely, for sure. for lonely sure. miles. I had overcome my fear of being alone in the dark on a trail. With mountain lions. With mountain lions in the morning <laughs> and weird people at night. And weird people. I saw a lot of weird people going up <laughs> Malins at night, just so you guys all oh, know. Probably man. not the best time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I ran into, like, a person breaking into houses one morning. Really? Like, called the cops and everything. Oh, like, my goodness. Just, it was a crazy month. Like, <laughs> I was so mentally burnt out. Yeah, right, right. I like that. <laughs> nice. What aspirations do you have now? Anything? Um, I Any think, goals you're pursuing? Yeah, so that's the hard part because I know what I do uh-huh. and how hard it is on my body. Right. Like that vertical challenge took a lot out of me. I mean, three days later, I swelled like crazy. Huh. I mean, my body went crazy. And then a week later, I was like heating up at night, just really? like trying to recover uh-huh. from it. So I know I push too far yeah. and I tend right, to not. Right listen to myself and ignore myself so now these days i'm trying to do better okay and like actually listen but push what i need to yeah so yeah, last yeah. year i did three trail races um i did a 50k which is 30 31 miles and i did a mar- two marathons okay and that went really well i i got a course record on one of them logan i was a minute off my first race which i jumped into the last minute so i was uh-huh. pretty happy with that one I'm yeah trained. yeah yeah and then my third race, I was the first girl, and I was, like, third overall. Okay. So that was pretty fun, too. And that was nice. Elva Carroll Local, which a lot of people do. Okay. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> this year, I think I think I want to try a 50-miler. Oh, like okay. Back country, tough terrain. Yeah, like yeah. Rugged, probably run into animals out there. Frank uh-huh. Churchill Wilderness, 50-miler. <laughs> Frank Churchill Wilderness, yes, okay. that's out in Idaho, and it's pretty much the roughest oh, nice. you can in this area. So, That sounds like amazing. true backcountry. <laughs> <laughs> and so so you hunt as well. Yes. You've just gotten into that the last few yeah, years, right? Yeah, it's kind of becoming my new hobby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So your husband's been hunting forever. Forever. Okay, I right, started right. off doing it just to, you know, bond and yeah, build yeah, a yeah. relationship together. That's awesome. And now you're filling the freezer. And... Now, yeah, now I'm, I'm trying to fill the freezer. So he tricked me into going by myself last year. And I had to drive through a stream, take a hard right-hand <laughs> turn, like literally on a slant that I was unsure if my truck was going to oh, like no. stay on it. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. I literally like leaning like a <laughs> My body would lean to the left. The truck was You're not that big. Over. I know. <laughs> But I got through it. I got up. I hiked up to the top of that hill, and I found, you know, three or four bucks. And I just was terrible at stalking. <laughs> got huffed up by a bunch of does. Oh man! <laughs> They're like, I see you. <laughs> You're not fooling anyone. But it was uh, a nice time right. out. And it was good yeah, weather, yeah, yeah. and and then we uh, went to my in-laws for. Uh, Halloween. Halloween day was the last day of the season. Oh, and we okay. were coming back that day and I was just like, I feel like if I just have one more day, I yeah. can get one. Like I know they're up there. I just need to get back out there and have two sets of eyes. Right. So right. he's like, all right, we'll go. So we dropped our kids off at a friend's house. She was nice. She watched them. And then we headed back out to the hunting spot and uh, yeah, we ended up running to another friend up there. He was just hiking, oh, well. uh-huh. had all his stuff, probably in case some hunter needed to have some help. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we ended up getting one last hour, oh, last nice. day, <laughs> crunch <Wow>. time, <laughs> my style. <laughs> right, right, yeah. So it was good. It was, oh, it's fun. Good. Like I love just being out there. I mean, yeah. hiking hard stuff For and sure. seeing nature is, uh-huh. it's pretty liberating. <laughs> nice. Very good. Well, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Um, no, I think for most people listening, I think it's hard to feel like you can relate to people on this podcast. But in reality, like your level of crazy is different than our level mm. of crazy. It's like I'm never going to be as brave as Arlo. Oh, whatever. And like seek <laughs> no. out things that are like, I'm not going to want to pull no. a truck. Although now I'm like. You should do it. Yeah, girls do this polling <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> in October. Um, I'm kind of like Deb. Uh, I just like jump on the bandwagon. I'm uh-huh. like, that sounds crazy. Let's do it. And I, I do more crazy when I'm with partners too. Like, I do, I do when too. When other person's Absolutely. doing it, I'm like, yes. Like, uh-huh. It motivates me to stay in the game. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think like for you just to remember who you are, like your level of crazy is crazy. 
don't compare hmm. it to somebody else's like for me going up really steep stuff where i feel like i can fall backwards is scary for me so i try to do that last year a couple times just to kind of get uh-huh. my fear so keep your crazy crazy don't yeah. don't compare yeah, yeah. It to other people your crazy is just as crazy and that if that like motivates you to do harder things and let that motivate you to do harder things don't let other people's accomplishment deter you from doing your own accomplishments i love it <laughs> Um, I'm not even going to say anything more after that because that's <laughs> fantastic to end on right there. So, Soraya, thank you so much. Yeah, thanks I, for having me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, and I always enjoy seeing your smiling face. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on the podcast, and to all of our listeners, however many that might be, three, four, maybe five, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you as well, and uh, we will come back with another guest soon. Perfect. Uh, That's it. That's it. Have a happy day.